What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday Track Talk podcast, episode number 27. Going on the jack for four tires and field. I am your gas man, Cameron. I'm your jack man, Kellen. I'm your tire changer, Cam. And as I said, uh, we're going on the jack for four tires and field. Um, we got a we got a jam-packed episode here today for you. So um, just a little bit of preview. We're going to talk... Uh, a whole gamut of different racing series today, it feels like, uh, which is always fun for us um, to just broaden the horizon a little bit and get out of the NASCAR. Obviously, NASCAR is the, the bread and butter for us, but um, we're going to get out of that. Um, we'll still cover NASCAR, but uh, we're going to talk some IndyCar. Um, we'll talk a little bit of Lucas Oil. They, they were, uh, were racing again here for the first time in about a month. And then also um, a big ASA National uh, tour race at five flags. So, um, that's a brief preview of what, what we got, uh, on the docket today, but before, before we get into it, as always, how we doing fellas? Good. Good. Finally, uh, we were talking for a while about how warm it's been and we kind of hinted last week that it wasn't going to be very good. And as I look out the window here, I don't know what you guys got, but we got a pretty good amount of snow up here. Yeah, it was pretty miserable yesterday. I was putting gas in my car and just standing there. And it's like, you know, when you can barely stand there long enough without <laughs> freezing your hands. Uh, that's what we had yesterday. So, yeah, it's been pretty miserable. Um, it's raining down here in the deep south. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. It rained all day, too. But over the weekend, we probably, eh, there's probably about five inches of snow on the ground. So, nothing. Really? Yeah, we got nothing. You got no snow? No. I mean, it snowed a little bit Friday night into Saturday. But it's one of those that's already gone. Two inches, and then it rained, and we got that Texas heat just blasting that stuff right off the ground. <laughs> I mean, we probably got, I don't know, I want to say four or five inches, and it's still down here. The same thing probably as you got Van Grohl. It's just wet and heavy yep. snow, and then it's raining, but... I mean, Cal, back home, central Wisconsin, I mean, shit, they were canceling school and all that for yeah, really a lot of central eight, Wisconsin schools, yeah. Eight, to, eight, eight inches to a foot, they were talking. Hmm. So, well. The weather wasn't a, a factor for uh, racing this weekend, though. Pretty much everybody got their racing in. No. Or Hot Loss canceled on Friday, but otherwise they got everything else in, including, I mean, all the racing that we're going to talk about here tonight, so. Nope. Well, uh yeah, let's stop talking about snow and <laughs> shitty weather and let's start talking about racing. Uh jumping in the first race recap here. Um I'm sure our tire changers itching to talk about it, and we'll just pass the baton right to him uh to lead this one off. But uh the IndyCar race at Thermal Club, um, first exhibition race for or since 2008. Um and this is tire changer. This is bread and butter. So I'll just kick it off to you and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So as you were saying, IndyCar at Thermal Club, which is a invite only club. So it's just, you know, those everybody with rich, rich money and fancy cars. They only get the invite to go there. But IndyCar got the invite to come there. Like you were saying to first exhibition race since 2018. So a little bit of an experimental race as well. Uh, they ran two heats. And they took six cars out of each of them. They had qualifying that lined them up in the heats and, and line drivers up into two heats, and they took the top six. Uh, it was one of those two that there were no team orders and all the unwritten rules did not apply. They were racing hard against each other to get in that top six. Um, so yeah, the first heat, they had a big wreck right out of the gate. Didn't even make it into the first corner, and they were already wrecking. Uh, took out a couple of cars there, some hot, some hot heads after that, but, uh, no. So Felix Rosenquist won heat one, Alex Pelot dominated heat two, uh, to bring the total of the, the 12 drivers that were in there. Um, they were able to change tires before the, uh, I guess main event you want to call it. Uh, they were able to change tires, fill up all that jazz. And then they had a, it was a 20 lap 
feature basically. So they ran 10, they ran 10 laps, took a 10 minute break, and then they run, ran the final 10 laps. Uh, one of the strategies that was going into it was Colton Herta. Uh, he saved his tires in the first half of the break. So he basically went to the back and just rode to save his tires because they weren't going to be able to change tires at that halfway break. Uh, yep. So he, so he saved his tires. Literally, he finished like a minute behind the leader just to save his tires. Um, he ended up finishing P4 in the later half of it with his fresher tires. So he he made his way through the field, but he burned them up going through as well. Um, so that was kind of the a little bit of the strategy going into it. Uh, at that halfway break, all they could do was uh, make some adjustments, minor adjustments, and tend to the driver. No fuel, no tires. That was it. Um, so Alex Polo ended up dominating the race. He led flag to flag, basically took home a cool five hundred thousand uh, dollars for that. So that's kind of their all star race, I guess you could say. Um, but the big question around it was: is was the race worth it? Because it was kind of uh that first ten laps was kind of lackluster. Nobody was really passing. Got really spread out. And then the second half, it it ramped up a little bit, but I think it didn't help that Axe Polo, he just had the best car. It, he he could have had tires that had 20 more laps on him, and he still probably would have won. It's just he had such a bad, fast car. So um, second second race on the season for the IndyCar Series. Um, again, a lot of questions around this race, whether it's kind of worth to run it in the future. I think it's a great track. It's just the format probably wasn't up to par by any means. But um, no, I mean, that was, that's pretty much all it does with IndyCar, just a couple of quick heat races and then the feature and, you know, they move on from there. So it was cool, cool event, cool track, really, really scenic track. So uh, no, that was, that was about all there was with IndyCar this weekend. So. No, one, one thought I had too is, you know, with the saving tires, I feel like, and maybe this could be something in the future, you know, we've dealt with that with NASCAR before stage racing was, you know, what is the incentive to race the first 375 laps out of a 400 lap race? If the only thing that matters is the last lap. So it'd be interesting, obviously hearing somebody that's just, as soon as the race starts, they just drop to the back. Um, and I'm not well versed. I don't know if that's, you know, one of their superstars, but I mean, I would have be like, uh, I'd have a tough time watching a NASCAR race. If Kyle Larson just peeled out to the back and said, yep, I'm just going to ride around back here and save my, save my tires. So it'd be, I don't know if it'd be intriguing if they could throw a little bone in there, um, for whoever was leading at the halfway point, um, cash yeah. price point prize i don't know whatever but um because i feel like stage racing has done that for nascar uh yeah. definitely made the racing within the race guys racing harder um and really going for it earlier in the race as opposed to saving it for for the very end so and and we've even seen that like you mentioned the points with nascar we've seen that with like the asa stars tour where they have the bonus for leading at the halfway mark and especially since this was just a money race, no points online or anything like that. Yeah, throw a little, a little bit extra money there for for halfway, adds that incentive a little bit. So that's a good thought. I never actually did think of that while I was sitting here thinking about it. But I don't know. Like I said, I think I think the track is great. I, it definitely could be a points paying race type of deal. It's just the maybe the experiment. It was it, it's something trying new, like NASCAR has been doing with the Clash or the All Star races. Like ah, let's just try it. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, so. and also got a, got a little bit of a, an ASA feel there, where ASA feel, um, where at the break, you know, all you can do is make a few adjustments, no feel, no tires. Yeah. Um, what you got is what you got. Yeah. Try to tune on it and go from there. So somebody, somebody mentioned, and this was just a like, uh, you know, fan interacting with you know a journalist or something like that podcaster type of thing somebody's like let's race these indie cars at martinsville and just see what happens and i'm like huh that'd be interesting to say the least so dear god <laughs> bad thing but, but yeah no, like i said all in all that was pretty much pretty much indie car this weekend um 
their season continues on. Obviously, they're they're leading up to the Indy 500 here coming up in two about two months now. Yeah, um, getting prepped for for the big one. Um, so yeah, that was the IndyCar series. Um, love having the tire changer on, on the crew because he can always. He doesn't even dip his toes in there. He cannonballs into the Indy car. So he's gonna, <laughs> he can cover that for us. So, um, but uh, jumping into the next uh, race that we had this weekend, um, we mentioned it earlier. Uh, Lucas Oil had the Indiana Icebreaker. Um, and so they were racing at Brownstown and Atomic. Um, obviously, Atomic got rained out on, I believe, Friday night. And then so they moved that show to, to Sunday night. Um, but uh, Saturday night, um 48 cars checked into Brownstown. Uh six lead changes between three drivers, all racing for 15k. So um I'll just kick it off to you guys. What thoughts did you have? Uh obviously it's been about a month um since Lucas Oil's been um in the swing of things. And last week we talked about driver changes, tire issues, all that. So um finally felt good to get back to what matters most, racing. Um, so I'll just kick it off to you guys. What thoughts did you guys have? Uh, so first weekend back for Lucas in a while. Cam, I'll let you talk about, or not Cam, Kellen, I'll let you talk about the race, but I just want to touch on the track real quick. When I tuned into that race, I don't know why, but it literally felt like they were racing in the middle of cornfield, the way like tur- turn three and four looked <laughs> with no wall out there. I'm like, this is literally in the middle of nowhere. Like that's somebody's farm sitting in the back over there and just, <laughs> yeah got a free show or something like that so. parking haulers in a cornfield <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i just it, it looked like that at least from my point of view um yeah. i just thought that was pretty cool yeah no i mean honestly really good race um you had six lead changes between three different drivers um devin moran put her on the top shelf and said yeah i'm gonna put her to the wood and i'm not gonna lift um Pretty much him, Bobby Pierce, uh, those two were pretty much trading it. Mikey Marler was there. Max Blair had a good run. Uh, that was that was good to see that 111 try to finally find the front a little bit. But, I mean, I mean, really the, la- the story becomes lap traffic. And Moran got on the top shelf and Bobby Pierce was on the bottom and he – to put it bluntly, he housed the 25 <laughs> in lab traffic. And Which I don't does. know if, if the 25 lifted or Bobby just had his foot in the wood and he said, yeah, no, I'm good with this. But um, I, he Pierce didn't have a choice but to go. I mean, Devin was on the top shelf and he was coming. So he didn't really have a choice but to go. So that kind of restacked them. But at the end of the day, I mean, Moran just had the, had the class of the field. Um, yeah, that was, I mean, that was really the story of it is, and he got his first ever win at Brownstown. So, um, pretty cool deal. He got that 15 K. Um, he was the ninth different winner in 10 races. So Lucas oil has got a really significant amount of parity in the field. So that's cool to see another win with them as well. And something like that, just the parity of winners you want. I think you want that any series because it gives not only the confidence, but just gives the series a little bit of a boost too. of, Hey, anybody could come in here and win on any given week in this series. For sure. And I mean, you look at the top 10, it was an interesting top 10 in that you had Devin Moran, Bobby Pierce, Mikey Marler, uh, Max Blair, RTJ, Huddy, B. Shep, Josh Rice, Nick Hoffman, and Dalton Wilson round out your top 10. So I mean, two, of, two of them that jump out, obviously Hudson O'Neill, his really his first race and yep. his new car. You always you were kind of wondering what he, what he was going to do there. And Nick Hoffman coming in from the World Outlaws to run a little bit of Lucas Oil. Yeah. Him and B. Shep. Yeah, for yep. sure. Yep. Um, I mean, honestly, Huddy pretty much picked up where he left off. I mean, now he's getting that he's getting in that Romley car, which Kevin's a smart dude, so there's no doubt about it. He was getting in a in a good piece, but 
it was just going to be what the translation was from going to a rocket from a rocket to a longhorn. So I, I also wonder, and again, this is kind of a small sample size type of deal too, but when you get into the heart of the schedule, and you start running a lot of races, kind of back-to-back weeks type of thing. That's when you kind of start to see who the cream of the crop is, and yeah. you can keep up on a weekly basis too. And I think yeah. you can throw that. I mean, roles reverse for McCready. Obviously, his first weekend with uh, yeah. the Rocket One team, and you know, a lot of us are gonna, you know, that know these big names, the Rocket House Car and Rumley. You know, you expect these guys to hop in and be competing for wins, but it just isn't quite that easy. It takes some time for these drivers to get used to the crew chief and all these cars, obviously switching chassis. It's going to take a little bit of time for these drivers to get used to the new team and setups and stuff like that. And I think, like you said, uh, Van Gro, once we get into, you know, some of these back-to-back weekends, a three-day shows, a Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you'll start seeing some of these teams um, show their true colors type of thing. Yeah. Start firing on all cylinders. You might see a McCready, which I mean, he was was still bad fast. um, Don't get me wrong, but um, obviously with Hudson O'Neill, I mean, he set the bar pretty, pretty damn high uh, Mm -hmm. for the expectations of that car um, and his, you know, just over a year with that team. I mean, at the end of the day, when you, when especially you look at Atomic um, as well with this Brownstone feature, there was a ton of guys that said they were excited for this weekend, tracks that they enjoy going to and have success. So it just ratchets it up another another notch on that whole deal. So, uh, man, it was, it was a damn good feature, honestly. I mean, fun to watch. Lap traffic played a role. You had guys just running the bottom, banging the boards, trying to get to the lead, and ultimately Devin Moran gets it done for – what did he say in his interview? Um, he he said something about the, the noise of the last couple of weeks that they just went back to work and got that car ready to rock and roll. So Yeah, you think for, you know – him and Bobby Pierce and Bronson, that's yep. probably going to be the motto for them guys. Is they'll just use this as motivation to, to yep. work extra hard to prove everybody, hey, whatever you guys think or found with, you know, this lab, I'm just showing you guys I really don't give a damn what that lab showed because <laughs> I can – I'm just going to continue to win and – Kind of do it the right way. Two small observations, I think, when you look at the weekend. One, um, listening to a couple different people, um, the rumor had it that Bobby Pierce is not going to run the World of Outlaws. Um, So something to keep an eye on as they get ready to go. Two, well, it's kind of twofold with that as well. He did yank the World of Outlaws stickers off the car. There were no World of Outlaws stickers on the car. That's I to me was a big observation, mm-hmm. you know, because a uh, uh, World of Outlaws guys run Lucas Oil. They leave the stickers on the car because they'll come back. Uh yeah, no World of Outlaws stickers on the thirty two machine. So, um, <clears throat> little bit of a maybe I'm overthinking that, but uh I think World of Outlaws would be disappointed to see him go. I think would be the terminology you would use for that. I mean, they'll be punching air if he leaves. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, legit, legitimately, in, you not, in, in, it's a small sample size, but you get on some of the comments and you read not only for what World Outlaws, but like for Dirk Vision, but like, you know, you ride with us or you die with us. That's what they did with some of their Facebook posts between his mom and him. And everybody is posting like, yep, the only reason I had dirt vision was for Bobby. Can't and you just scroll through some of the comments and yeah. it's a lot of cancels. Um and no, I'm not saying they're gonna send dirt vision under, but I'm saying from a viewer, I mean, again, you're talking about a sports biggest star, you're talking about 
for us, you know, in Aaron Rodgers, um, basically saying, yeah, I'm not going to play. Or yeah. you know, I'm going to go to the Canadian Football League or, you know, something like that. So, well, you know, and I th- I think we even see that on the short track scene with some some teams that travel around of, all right, if Fen House is racing at WIR versus State Park, all them fans are going to go to WIR because they're going to go watch Fen House race. They're gonna they're gonna follow the drivers and they are more of the series. Yeah. So no. yeah, that I mean I would think World Outlaws probably was setting a standard or a precedent uh and making an example out of him, but I mean that was the World Outlaws claim to fame. That was their star and what they could hold themselves to anytime Bobby Pierce. I mean, he is in the top five at 90% of the races he goes to and world outlaws could cling to that. He could come to a, a Lucas oil race and win it. And that's what world outlaws can claim. That's our boy. He's almost the poster child. Yeah. And yeah, I would think it's going to be a huge blow for Lucas or for world outlaws. If, if he does decide he comes out and says, yeah, I'm not running them. So well, obviously, Obviously, if he does commit, he's got a pretty long ways to go uh, as far as championship goes. He's looking at the point standings. As of yesterday, he's 1,300 points back from the points lead. It's not bad. For Lucas Oil. For Lucas Oil, yep. Yeah, I don't think he'll run. If if he if he steps away from all of all us, he'll run a true outlaw schedule. That's what I'm going to say. I think he – I think the penalty – actually axed his both opportunities for him. He, missed, he took he missed, some time off. He missed the first, you know, dozen races of Lucas the Lucas Oil series. Yeah. Yeah. And so put him in a hole there. And then he gets the penalty for World Outlaws and then he's in a massive hole there. So it kind of acts both of them, which I think Kelly, you're right. I think now he just says, all right, screw it. Let's pick out hey, what's our, you know, cherry pick. Yeah, what's the top 15 things we're good at and I enjoy racing? Um, what's just, good for our merch? And, yeah. Just a simple, what works good for us? Yep. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I think when you look at it, so we can roll right into uh, Sunday night's feature. I mean, again, he was in the top five. That's, again, you're racing for good money there as well. He was there. Um, so Sunday night's feature at Atomic. God damn, is that place racy? Yes, it is. I haven't that's that's the first feature I've watched here. Holy hell, that place is awesome. Um, but it was the dude, the runs, watching the runs in that feature, especially on the top shelf there. Uh you had JD, Mikey Marler, Owens. I was McCready. gonna say the one that JD had coming out of two to go around, I think it was Marler. Holy <laughs> yeah, cow. He, he almost left the facility. Um, I thought Marler broke. Oh. Like, he just just was gone. Yep. And you For almost, sure. yeah, almost, I was almost going to text you about this. Uh, What was it, like, was 17 ago or something like that, where you had the four of them together out fighting for the lead? As yeah. they were getting a lap traffic, it was just about to get good when it when they had that caution come out. Yeah, yeah, Josh Rice. I think he yeah. got her turned around up in one and two. But I mean, I think that was the story of the night. Um, you know, they said on the broadcast, JD had an absolute missile uh when he was in clean air and he had nobody in front of him, but Marler had the better handling car once it got to lap traffic, and it just every time. I mean, there was one time that JD got into lap traffic that, you know, that whole sequence where Marlowe led, you know, two laps or so. But it just felt like every time it was about to get dicey and interesting, JD would catch him back into the field and then we'd get a caution and be like, damn it. Kind uh, of build, build them out a little bit. Yeah. Because then Mar- Moran, again, another solid night. Um, he was just slowly reeling uh, Marler in and it was just. Yeah, every time it felt like it was about to get good, um, throw a lap car in here and there, yeah. get a yellow, and 
reset, but um yeah, dude, JD, uh only repeat winner in the last 10 features. He led flag to flag, didn't he on Sunday? Uh um, I thought I heard that they said I thought he said they said he led flag to flag. There was, I think, two laps in there that Marla led. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it was, yeah, it was I think it was like two laps, right? I think two yeah. laps, and then he made that wicked that move. Yeah. yeah. He went bonsai on the outside. Yeah. Oh, um, how about in Cam? You're gonna love when I when I mention this one. My neighbor, my neighbor Gary Alberson takes a provisional to get in a point, a rookie of the year points provisional to get in, goes twenty third to ten. And I'm looking at the screen. I'm like, oh, God damn, is he a lap down? Oh no, he was racing <laughs> he, position. He's I'm on like, the other side of the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, you know. JD's their bonsai and through there and he's a lap down. Oh no. He was racing for position on the lead lap. I mean, um he good for him. It. I mean, tough, tough goal of it, but 23 to 10. That's dude, that's a hell of a feature. And that was what was that a 40 lap feature? I think that was a 50. 50 piece, sir. So he was the only one to go double digits plus um a hard charger, yeah. Or he so he was a hard charger, but no, I mean again, he he got off to, again, he showed speed early, and he just got off when he spun in the heats. Yeah, he uh, got good there. Yeah, it just buried him uh, for the rest of the night. But in that B main, you could tell from where he started, and he was got right to the rear end of the, the final transfer spot, the third spot. And I forget yeah. who he's racing, but you could just tell in that B main, I mean, granted, you're not racing J.D., Marler, the big boys, but it's like you could tell he had a car that had speed and he could um but he could put it where he wanted and he could race. So um yeah. yeah. Uh Gary's gonna get one here. He, he is he's somebody who we we mentioned on previews on episodes that he's showing speed. Um and he he's I'll, gonna get he's gonna get one soon. I'll go on record and say it'll be this year. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I'm going to go on record and say this here. It's going to be he's he he's going to get one here, and that's going to be big for that whole program. So, yeah, I, mean, I got to get it. Go ahead. I was going to say I got to give a shout out to my boy Hoffman. Like I said, coming in <laughs> oh. and invading in the the Lucas soil. Yeah, he had a pretty much a uh, you know seventh to ninth place car yeah. the entire weekend. But I'm sure he just enjoys getting out and. Racing, a workman, pretty much a workman type week, workman yep. type weekend for him. I mean, didn't tear anything up, he didn't set the world on fire, he didn't run last. I mean, you made the features, yep, started well. I mean, when you look at the feature, um, the finishers you got JD, Mike Marler, Devin Moran, Owens, uh, Bobby Pierce, McCready, Nick Hoffman, RTJ, Max Blair, and then Alberson rounds out your top 10 for Atomic. So it's not like he's going somewhere and racing these weekly guys that he's running seventh to some guys at a weekly show. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, he, he started up front and lost a couple, but it wasn't like he dropped like a rock either. Yeah. He actually did. Cause he, he went from seventh. If I remember reading his tweet, tweet, right. He went from seventh to 11th and worked his way back up to ninth. Yep. Yeah. He's yeah. Struggled there a little bit. There's a restart. Got trapped yeah. on the bottom. But, um, the one name that pops out on there too, and again, that was kind of the the opposite side of of Huddy, um, as far as what he was going to do, McCready, in that rocket car, yeah, and and just how he was going to start off the weekend strong with it being his first one, um, you know, getting what is that sixth, yeah, sixth that atomic, so. yeah. yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm going to go on the record now again. <clears throat> lots of records tonight, um. You know who's gonna you know who's gonna run for a title this year and be competitive? You're gonna go with McCready, aren't you? No. No. As they would say, the one five seven. Oh, like oh Mar uh Marler, yeah. Marler's he could be a guy that could come in here and say, I'll be in the final four. I I even think I remember saying that earlier in the year because he ran really good at where the hell was it that he ran really good at? God damn it, where was it at? It was early, early in the year, I thought. He's ran good everywhere he goes. Like, yes. Is that a bottle? He, he keeps getting himself up there. 
Was it Vado? Maybe. Out west. Um. Yeah, because he won a feature out there. Well, it was that, and then I think it was Speed Weeks earlier in the year or the Winter Nationals when he remember he went on that tear where he would start twenty third and he drove it to second. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, he, that was I think when, that was Winter Nationals, and I forget where it was. If it was so East, he Bay won. Or, he won at Gold Isles. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, so it was like during that whole stretch. Yep. Yep, yep. that's – nope, I agree with you, though. He's a guy that – he's going to okay. sneak up. He's going to stick his nose in there for sure. So let's let me check one thing here real quick. He is currently fifth in points, 130 back. He, that's – that's one that's one weekend. Somebody struggles ahead of him, and he has a good weekend. Giving you, a, we'll, we'll do this here real quick. Top five in Lucas Oil points as of the 24th. Uh, Thornton's in the lead. Davenport's back by five. Devin Moran's back by 65. Neal's, Hudson O'Neill's back by 75. And then Myler, Marler at 130 back. It's your top yep. five. Dalton Wilson, Brandon Shepard, Jimmy Owens, Tim yep. McCree, Garrett Alberson, your top 10. Yeah. Nope, I, I agree with you, though. I'm I'm a dude, I'm excited for that points that points <laughs> battle. Yeah, and you gotta figure. Um yeah, Cal shout out Gary, tenth there. First oh. ever without a win. Um so yeah, I think he'll I mean he'll he'll get one this year and be interested to see where Gary goes. But no, and then the big looming question there is in the point standings, in the old four spot, what's gonna happen with Hudson O'Neill? He's going to have to lock something up. <clears throat> uh, we are fastly approaching um, decision day. Uh, yeah, think, April 1st. Which is a week from today. I was going to ask you that as well. When was decision day? Yeah, it's April 1st. They have to have their loyalty deposit in. So I think he goes a Pierce. I don't think he has everything finalized and in place. Um, maybe he does, but... I think him and Pierce will be a, a true outlaw schedule while he gets, you know, his plans in place, whether it's this Rumley car long-term, sponsorships, all that jazz. I think it'll be a piece of, piece of together year for O'Neill, but um, could totally be wrong. I guess we'll find out next week, Monday. For sure. Well, should we go from one super to the other? Yeah, any other final thoughts on – uh, Luke Soil and Atomic. No, oh, badass. Is that good to get, good to have those guys back? It's been about a month um, that we've been off, and uh, been coming up here. It's still a little bit uh, sporadic, but uh, yeah, we'll get them going. Yeah, about another month um, off until April twenty sixth, and then once we hit in get into April, then we start rolling. Um, just about every other weekend. So it's a nice little tease there again. Uh, we went a month, got a weekend show, and then got to go about another month. So uh, good to have them back. Fun to watch. Always put on a great show. So uh, we will have to wait for another month to see another great show. So, but um, like Kellen said, when you don't have one super, you can jump to another. Uh, so we had the ASA uh, Stars National Tour at Five Flags. Uh, and Cole Butcher gets the win. Um, so I'll just lead with that, and then I'll kick it off to you guys for, for initial thoughts here uh, on the race at <clears throat> Five Flags this past weekend. Not the guy I was expecting to be strong this weekend. No, I'd agree. I was expecting Roderick to be the guy to beat this weekend. I was expecting a Roderick, Nassi, Pollard shootout for yep. the win. Yep. Which, I mean, Roderick yep. finished P2, but. Nope, Na Nassi did. Oh, Nassi did. I'm sorry. Yep, yeah. Nassi did. Um, no, it was, I mean, you saw it early on. Uh, uh, Roderick definitely was had a really good car. Um, Butcher took advantage of the pit 
cycle that happened just before the end of stage one to get himself out front. Mm-hmm. Ended up holding off Butcher on old tires to to get the win in stage one. Roderick only took new rights when he went to pit as well. They had six tires that they were able to work with in the pits. So yeah. um Matt Craig was your fast timer. He had said in his interviews like he was a little worried about that just because he feels like he's a little too free now for the race. And I think it kind of showed a little bit. He just never was really able to get himself up there towards the front. So, uh, and the thing with this is, and if, if you don't know or haven't followed the SC stars national tour, um, these are impound races impound and they redraw the top eight. So they redraw the top eight, but what, whatever you qualify on and that's where it gets dicey with this series is you got a lot of cars showing up. And if you don't qualify into the show, that can be, pretty damn tough to get into the future so what you qualify on is what you find yourself starting the race on outside of adjusting air pressures yep so for those just for a reference for those that um are listening but haven't followed that's that's how that goes so and craig did end up finishing fifth in that race i didn't catch where he started uh during the redraw but he ended up finishing fifth in that race so yeah that's you told a fine line there (laughs) yeah yeah, for sure. Um, otherwise, you had right at the at the end of stage one in that one caution, you had a couple of cars go right away. And Austin Ason went out uh, with an oil cooler issue, and then Dawson Sutton uh, from the lead goes out with a blown motor as well. That was just un- under caution as well. Under caution, it's just you want you would talk about a way to lose that race. Yeah coming from the lead and just blowing an oil. I mean, we saw, I think it was part of that free view that they had yeah. to yeah. there a little bit. You just saw the oil dripping down the front nose of that car. It's like, yikes, that thing blew. Yeah. Any, anytime somebody's coming down under caution and it's not scheduled, you just hold your breath. And especially him, who he's been, he's had a solid, he's had, he's, he's, he's had, had a solid had, future. He's got good cars, but tough luck. Correct. Um, He's done a decent job uh, to start the year and run well. But like you said, um, tough luck. And like I said, when somebody comes down under yellow um, and the announcer says, this is unscheduled, the first thing they do is pop the hood and you could see it immediately. um, Just the oil spewing everywhere over that car. So yeah, obviously heartbreak for him. Um, Had a good car again. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. You know what's gonna be fun to see where they run, see how they run up here, up here. When you come up to Madison, when they don't, I shouldn't say don't have data, but coming to a place for the first time, and I'm gonna have a feeling there's gonna be a good com- car count for that one. Well, so you're gonna get both of them because that's and unfortunately I'm gonna miss this because I'll be in Iowa. Uh, but you're going to get them back to back. You got Madison on that Friday and you got Milwaukee on that Sunday. Yeah. So you're literally going to get them back to back. Yep. So I'll be curious to see how that goes when it comes up here, especially to Madison. That'd be a fun one. You realize that's not that far off. Oh no. There is at Hickory in May, which geez, that's a long ways away yet. And then June. So we're talking two events really for that, but, um, no, and it's, I, I've said it all the time when them, them guys from really the south come up here to race. It's like, all right, a lot of these guys haven't raced here before. Let's see what they do. We go back to Cole Butcher at WIR. Uh, Stephen like, Nassie in Madison last year. Stephen Nassie at Madison. Given he's run there a lot, but he just. He didn't make the feature. Correct. He just outright did not make the feature. Yep. Yep. But, so it's good. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see as well. Um, but no, like we said, Butcher was, was hands down, probably the strongest car, even on old tires, um, uh, pit cycle again, kind of fell a different way where Giro Ruggiero was able to win stage two. Um, and then that's kind of when, uh, all hell kind of broke loose. You had Roderick spun off the bumper of Bowen. Uh, he fell off the pace, fell off the pace later on, but the Pollard had an engine blow late in the race, took him out of it. And then you had Ruggiero and Butcher were racing hard for lead. Tire marks hard for the lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I'd like to see Pollard be able to finish. I, I saw 25 to go. 
You can just he, tell. And he, he even said in his interview too that he knew he didn't have quite the car he needed to win that race, but he just wanted to at least finish good. Yeah, especially for a good. The yeah, exactly. He needed a point stay out of it, and he doesn't even get that as well as he could have. Um, Butcher and, and Ruggiero were going at it to the point where I thought they were going to wreck themselves. <laughs> they were trying. They were trying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and I think Ruggiero wasn't super happy about how Butcher raced him, but I think Butcher wasn't too happy about how he got raced either. And I get both of their points. Um, but he, when it comes down to it, Butcher was able to pull away. Nasty was able to get around Ruggiero. And Nasty, I think he just didn't have enough time and wasn't able to catch him. But yeah. In a true nasty fashion, too, he even said it. I'm not a great qualifier. I got a good race car, and that's exactly what he had. Well, if it was, if it was the snowball derby, he would have been in primed position. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, damn good race though. <laughs> oh, absolutely good race. Good to have again. It's always great to have the ASA uh, back on the series. Uh, there were comers and goers throughout the race. Uh, otherwise, check it out. Your top five, Cole Butcher, Stephen Assey, Jerry Ruggiero, Jacob Gomes, kind of a quiet day, but kept his way up there. Uh, Matthew Craig, might as well hit the top 10 here. Michael Hine, Jake Finch, Colby Howard, uh, Jet Nolan, and Sean Hingarani, who Hingarani was in a Derek Thorne prepared car. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Broderick for finished 11th since he's next in line there, so. Um, yeah, not exactly the week on one for Roderick. Um, waiting for the point standings to get updated uh, from ASA, but I can imagine that kind of taking a quick look at this, I got I to gotta think Butcher's probably going to take the lead. Yeah. In the points. Yeah. If not, it's going to be damn close. Yeah. Because Bobo's going to fall off a little bit. Roderick's Nolan might be up there. Majeski's going to fall off. Yep. Yeah, so it's got to be pretty close to probably have Butcher there in the lead. Yep. So, no, again, good race. They're going to be off for a while. At least they say it's going to be off for a while. Uh, like I said, they're not racing until May now. So I'm sure, but you'll see a lot of them guys running other series or other events around the country as well. Yeah, for sure. Give them some time to get prepped, but no, like you said, um, didn't get to watch the whole race, but the bit I caught was um, good race, and like you said, when you sent the the picture of Bubba going out 25, it's like, damn it. Yep. Um, the only thing that was going to stop him at this point in the season was something he couldn't control. Yep. That's... That, you, you don't want to talk about a place that has broke his heart more than it's uh -huh. done good for him <laughs> that he's that that place is the monkey on his back so he runs good when it's the southern super series southern super series i mean given this was a super southern super series race but when you get the asa there or you get snowball derby run it's just you want to talk about a place that he just it just can't get it nope. something's got to happen yeah but it'll be one of those two that when he does finally pull it off, especially the Derby, because he ha he has to win it at some point in time here. That place is gonna go nuts. He'll he'll race it until he's six feet under. <laughs> yeah. No, let's be honest. No, yeah. they, nope. He will he will race that race if he hasn't won it. He will race that race until they take his license away. <laughs> yep. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Oh man. He'll get it, he'll get it done someday. Yep. Like, uh, yeah, so obviously uh great race uh, for the ASA Tour. And like you said, um, they'll be off for about a month uh, before another sanctioned event. So uh, be on the lookout. You'll see that some of those guys running different series and different cars and um, just finding any way to get some seat time uh, while they're off for about a month. So um, if you guys don't have any other final thoughts on the ASA race, um we can jump to cup and we can go left and right. Talk a little road racing. Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, obviously NASCAR went left and right this weekend. Um, and we went racing at, uh, Coda. Uh, so the NASCAR cup series was at Coda this past weekend. 
uh, first road course of the weekend or of the year. Sorry. Um, and I'm just going to go on just go out and say it. Uh, that was not who I expected to win the race was William Byron. Nope. I, so I don't know. I'm not surprised. Sure. But I'm not surprised that he ran good there. I expect him to win good, but not win the race. Yeah, I, I mean, the dude, the dude didn't put a foot wrong, as Jeff Gordon would say. Nope, he just didn't. I mean, when you look at the road course ringers that he had breathing down his neck, he couldn't make a mistake. And you think about that too. You know, you got Jeff Gordon saying that he knows a thing or two about running road course races. He he wasn't too shabby back in his day either. So great. Yeah. And I think, you know, like you said to that point, you know, and it not only that, um, he was able to minimize damage, but then not only that, but he avoided any mayhem throughout the day. And not only that, but he executed on pit road. Um, because yeah. you saw that when those guys were making green flag stops, um, a handful of penalties that it's borderline. You can't recover from that um, in a race like that we had. So, um, I, again, yeah, I feel like after watching the Netflix, you know, the series on him and just knowing the preparation that he puts into stuff like that, it's like we know we can get it done at a mile and a half and obviously super speedway the way he started the year, but I did not expect this. But seeing the way he did it, I mean, it was just a workmanlike day. Oh yeah, and again with with having green flag pick stops the way that that race ended up being, those handful of seconds on pit road mattered a ton, and that pit crew came to work. Yeah, yeah. and he had a few other penalties in other places, which we'll discuss in a little bit here. Yep. Um, but again, didn't miss a beat there either. The only and that car was perfect up until he did his burnouts. I mean, <laughs> ultimately, yeah. Spotless. Yeah. But, I mean, early in the race, it, right out of the gate, you had a couple guys with uh, issues right away. You, uh, MTJ has a wheel come apart, not fall off, but come apart. Uh, so it was the rim was bent on it. Got it, yep. I knew they said they had issues with the, with the wheel itself, so. Yep, the a rim was thing. bent on it. Yeah, fluke thing with him. Uh Bubba had issues right away. Who he rebounded for a fifteenth, which on lap one to have to come down on lap two to make repairs to finish fifteenth is pretty solid. And then poor Michael McDowell oh. loses power steering. Power steering early. I mean, I don't uh, think he ever did get it back. No, <laughs> no, he's just riding around out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, who was that? Mark, I'm assuming it was Martin Truex Jr. because it was LaJoy that pinched him and him and yeah, so LeJoy and Bubba hit when there was a guy right in the middle. Was that yep. was Martin Truex was in the middle? Got it, yeah, yep. And that and in somewhere in that it bent the rim for from that tire, yeah. That, well, that'd be Murray's pick. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, to, uh, not to allude to fantasy, but I'm I'm careful who I give fantasy advice to, just because you don't want to be the person that gives advice, and then you're the reason somebody else sucks. Yep. But I bit my tongue when Carolyn put Corey LaJoy in starting P5. Yeah. <laughs> I just fl- flung off the text. Uh, we're down in 18th after after one lap, and it's like. Holy shit, you talked about a code run. And you know, I mean, you want to talk about, you know, having a good run first off to be able to start up front with them guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're kind of, you know, ex, it, you know, Spire, we talked about them early in the year as far as port cards go. We were expecting LaJoy to have a good run this season. That was a bit of great opportunity to maybe steal one away, but God damn it, did that luck, his luck this year has not been super great either to start the year no. off. Not at all. But... Yeah, obviously, like you said, um, tough, good for him. I definitely out-qualified his car, I think, um, and was able to start up front. Um, yep. And then you had um, 
just some, obviously with road races, you get, um, uh, obviously some teams throw some, some hammers in there, um, or some guys you don't see every week. So we had SVG, uh, on the circuit this week. We had a man, Kobayashi, I think it was, yep. uh, racing the, uh, 50 for, uh, 2311, but, uh, yeah, from, from hot dog world champion to NASCAR world champion. <laughs> Come on. Uh, not the same individual. Sorry. I just had to, every time I saw no. his name, I'm like, God damn it. Hot dog guy. <laughs> no, but, um, obviously SVG, I threw him in my fantasy lineup this week, obviously on a, on a road course, you know, he's going to be, uh, run well. Um, but he lost first gear and you could clearly tell, Oh yeah, it was. I'm certain I'm bad. Yeah, when you talk about, you know, before the race, when Larry Max talking about how many times you're going to be shifting through the gears over a thousand shifts throughout the day, and you're going to be in first gear at, you know, majority of the corners. I mean, that just took the wind out of sails for him. But he he was having a solid day. He was running that what ten to fifteen range most of the day, and yep, um, was having a solid day. Um, but. Kobayashi, on the other hand, was struggling. And yeah. Ooh, somebody, somebody sent him to space. Who was Josh that? Barry. Oh, it was, Josh well, Barry. Barry, Barry and Stenhouse. Stenhouse has wrecked it both times that he's raced now. <laughs> Dude. Sten, I don't know what it is, but Stenhouse just does not like him, apparently. Uh, yeah, so oh, Stenhouse, Stenhouse does the old spin job, but Josh Barry just – that was a right them. boot, right boot, right to the rear even, end. Even Harvick had a hard time trying to, ye, yikes, that, uh, he sent them. Well, and, and you know, they mentioned on the broadcast, too, you know, after Barry punted him, you know, which I get it, but in a sense, I don't, is, you know, they said Barry was just sick of the way he was racing him, and these NASCAR guys are not going to let, you know, some – one hit sensation, you know, race them like that when they're only there for a week. So, you know, they, Kevin just said, you know, some of these guys, they refuse to be raced like shit by somebody who's only going to be there for a week. Sure. And that's why they feel like they can do what they do, but I'm not justifying nor am I saying I agree with it, but yeah, the poor guy was just getting punted. <laughs> He's getting punted. Oh. Right now. <laughs> um. But no, outside of that, outside of him, um, sticking in that Toyota camp, um, and another uh Netflix series superstar, Christopher Bell. Uh he's he's gonna be a contender this year. Yep. I think that race solidified it. Him and then the guy that won the race are gonna be two early heavy favorites. Yep. So uh, yeah. did, even yeah. dude on old tires, on old tires, he could, he could oh, run. Yeah, he could run with them, and that's that's a hats off to the Joe Gibbs camp that brought an absolute unit of a race car for him. So, well, it, again, Gibbs brought a good team, the yeah. entire team. Truex had a good car. He was he kept making his way up front. Obviously, Gibbs led a ton of laps and was up front the entire race. Hamlin kind of worked his way up there a little bit. I mean, it's there, and there's all four of your Gibbs guys right there. Oh, but, uh, a quick so moment. One thing, I, that too. One you thing know. I gotta chime in quick, and I cannot, I just cannot stand it at all. Now I said Gibbs is gonna get his first win this year, but after every race, I get it. Monster's your sponsor, but watch him drink that monster that has nothing in it. <laughs> and he acts like something's in it he drinks like he'll drink it and then he'll just keep talking and you know nothing's in it and you just want to reach out of the, reach and reach through your tv screen and grab that can and just smash the shit out of it even just put a put a water in it put something in there yep. because the other day he, they interviewed him after the race he takes a quick swig you can clearly tell nothing's in there and then he goes like this like he's rinsing it around in his mouth i'm like okay you want to get one right between <laughs> the eyes for doing that, but anyway, sorry. So uh, we're gonna get, well, let's so let's talk about well Gibbs, Byron Gibbs, Reddick, 
Chastain, Bell. I mean, those are pretty much your five that dominated the race. But let's let's talk about a little bit more. I don't want to say controversy in this race, but the discussion that's around it. The discussion that's around it. But first, before we get into the track limit thing, how about uh, Christopher Bell's old teammate coming over? <laughs> I mean, I mean, he had a gri- he had a legitimate gripe. Yep. And so, Bell said he Bell said he knew and understood why he was pissed off. Yep. Stood there and took it. Yep. So it, I'm gonna hopefully if my memory serves. So I know he, he obviously spun him out, but one it looked like Bell locked up the left front slightly if he did slightly if he did but also like it also did not look like kyle bush was running the standard line coming out of that corner no so he go ahead which if you watch it it's like okay yes christopher drove it in there further than he should have and he's slightly you know if he did lock up the front it looked like it maybe not but christopher obviously drove it in there further than he should have but then it's also like you flip the coin. It's like on some of those restarts, those guys are fanning way out to the grass and coming yeah. up. And it felt like Kyle Busch did not do that. He cut it. And it's like, you know, Christopher Bell can sit there and say, well, dude, I, why are you cutting the corner like that? You know, everybody else runs it out to the grass when they got somebody on their inside. So I, yeah. I, it was one of those like B- Bush was trying to, he had it out there because he was planning a crossover, is what it was. And Bell just got, basically drove it into his crossover in a way. So speak of turn one, um, I mean, obviously Bush had a few things to say for uh, Gibbs, basically asked him, have have I ever wrecked you? No. And he said, you've got some shit coming. For Bell. For Bell, correct. Yep. Um, so uh, spotter Brett, Brett Griffin, um, he's got the old ask door bumper clear out there today. I saw this. Let's uh he says let the questions rip. Connor Zilich is gonna stop by for a few. Jesse Love. Uh what what breaker what, what break marker should I use going into turn one? <laughs> Connor Zilich replies, What's the best way to save fuel on a super speedway? <laughs> I just thought that was funny. We'll talk about yep. turn one. But yep. yeah, those guys uh Having a little fun with it on social media. A little shout out to Connor Zilich, though. First time in a truck. Yeah. He didn't do half bad. No. Especially at a place like he's well, he's a road course guy to start off with. So but Dude, yes, he did. That. You want to talk about setting that thing off at a turn <laughs> one. You just saw him goal was like, where whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh, that's classic. No, but going back to your point about Kyle Bush, like don't get me wrong, he's won a couple races and like I don't want to say um, this is total speculation I probably shouldn't even say it, but I'm going to but in a way like I do feel like Kyle Busch, okay yeah he spun out and then he goes over and says how many times have I spun you out? It's like Bell's like zero but in a way I feel like Bush this is his way of like taking out his frustration on a young and young and up up and coming star, or not only that, but a star that is outruns him every single week at his old team with his old equipment. And now Bush is like, Yeah, you little punk with my former team, you got more shit coming when it's like Bell doesn't week to week, the guy doesn't say boo. He shows up to the racetrack, he goes about his business the right way. He's got a good car, he races everybody clean. And now Bush comes back and says, oh, yeah, you got a bunch of shit coming. It's like, come on, dude. And who's to say, obviously, heat of the moment type of thing. Just got out of the car, been a long day. Yeah. Got wrecked like that. And I'm sure they've got each other's numbers. They have to. Well, yeah. Say they talk it out later in the week. Yeah. Bell just does them a ton of favors the rest of the year. Yeah, well, Bell said they'll talk about it before the next one. So, yeah, I mean, emotions run high. I, I get it. And Bush obviously had a, a quick race car. Just, yep. 
maybe a little bit as part of a, just a frustrating season to start off with too. Yeah. yeah. But speak of wild turns and this and that and the other thing, uh, let's talk about these track limits and or these penalties. We good with that? Here's so I've got two stances on it and, you know, pick it apart as you feel. I don't feel like the track limits did all that much when it came to limiting the drivers. I think you almost have it on the wrong side. Instead of having the two tires on the curb on the left side or the right side, depending on what side of the S's you're on, I think you got to do it where the right side of the tires are on the inside of that corner type of thing. Yeah. I'd agree. I think that's kind of where you got to do the track limits at. You can't do it on, on, you know, the outer part of the car to the curb. Yeah. So that way you're truly not getting to cut that S, but you're letting them take advantage of getting on the inside of that curb. Yeah. So what, this is going to be, you guys are probably laugh that I don't even know this, but where was the track limits? Was it just on the S's? Or... Correct. Yeah, it was just the S's. Yep. Got it. So it was, I wonder if I could pull up a track map here for you. Good Lord. Do it, do I, was gonna, I was going to say, I mean, I, and then you go to turn, I believe it's turn eight, and the boys. And no track eight, limit. No track limit. And the boys wanted to go back to Bristol Dirt, and they were <laughs> inside of that corner on dirt, and they're sliding all over coming out of that. And it's like, yep. I don't know. I, I guess you need some sort of gauge, but. Yeah. So it would be turn. I mean, it's kind of how Google describes it here, but it'd be turn three, four, five, and six, I guess, if you want to call it that. Where the S is? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, and then, you know, you, you so you saw Chase Elliott get the penalty. Yep. And he was pleading to say he didn't intentionally do it. He was down there because he was trying to save it and not wreck. But he got run through there. Yeah. So... Well, he didn't even get run through there. He just lost it. He hit that he hit that one curb a little too different and it knocked him loose and it knocked him into uh the that really the inner part of that next S. Yeah. He just he didn't have enough room to catch it, simply what it was. Correct. Cam, you know what I think we could go back to? And I mean that killed his day. That was a top five. Oh, yeah. That sent him back to finish sixteenth. So that killed his entire day. You know what? You know what would fix this? Let's go back to Indianapolis road course. Let's yes, get, let's get that big turtle out. Let's get the turtle oh. back. Well, even what them, they run at the Roval, too. Yeah, Dude. let them bonsai through the turtles and see <laughs> yeah. if that changes their thoughts a little what? bit. Who's to you say that they the don't essence? do that? We'll, we'll, we'll put turtles in there. That could be a Dude, that, but that could be a simple... But that could be a simple fix that they run for that weekend. They take them out and they run whatever else they run there the rest of the year. Yeah. It's a simple fix. Let's let them go through. Yeah. Remember at Indy Road Course and they're tearing the noses off of cars and splitters are going underneath the turtles. And that was, I think it was Logano that went airborne over it and <laughs> yeah. wrecked the entire field. No, I mean, that's a brilliant idea. Hey, we'll let you, we'll let you, you can. Push the waters as far as you want. You can test it. You can go as deep as you want. But just know if you go too far, this will mess up the front end of your car. Yep. And that's so, the only way that'll keep them off. Or if that'll be the fairest way to do it. And if you go too far, your day is going to be done. So I got a, a question, but then suggestion number two that I want to throw to you guys as well. My question was, do, do you guys remember if they did warnings when they first did this? Like they gave a warning if you cut it the first time and then they penalized you the second time. I thought they did warnings at one point in time. Maybe they did. I can't remember. I could have sworn they did. But that brings up my second point of, okay, if you cut the course, maybe the penalty is too harsh. But I get where they're trying to do like, because that probably 30, the 30 seconds after the race probably comes from the time it goes down to do the drive through on pit road. Yeah. That's probably where the 30 seconds come from. Yeah. Whereas maybe it's kind of like what they do at the Roval, where 
given still maybe a little harsh, but you have to do a stop and go. Yeah. Given there's yeah, hard, I, there's I not a really good place to do it on the track there, but, or even I maybe, uh, uh, I don't know. They do this in formula one sometimes, or Christ, they do it in NASCAR for some circumstances. You're held for 15 seconds on pit road. Yeah. To me, the simple solution is the turtles. <laughs> I no, I I agree with that. Let them let you if you want to if you want to want to push the limit, go again, for it. Do as you please, but just re- yep. But like you were saying, those turtles they will they'll come at you like Mario. Yep, that's uh, you can go out you can go out in the waters, but once you can't swim, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um. um no, what I, are the other I, questions that we kind of uh, if we're done are we done with the track limits one or yeah okay yeah. I was gonna say just what do we think of the racing as a whole like do we think it got a little too drawn out and especially since there were zero cautions for cause during that race as well like just... I didn't mind it I, honestly like some the the Gluck poll had a terrible review yep which um, I haven't even checked it since I voted on it. It got a terrible review, but at the end of the day, you want to talk about having a supreme strategy and pit crew to go with a driver. This place showed it. You got to be on it. You got to know what you're doing. You got to have the right, the right lap, the best pit crew to go with having a good race car. So I don't know. I, I didn't mind it because it left, it left more of the race to call from the pit box in terms of calling the shots, which I enjoyed. So yeah, I'm gonna say I enjoyed it. Um, go ahead. I I got Jeff Gluck's poll up. Go <laughs> ahead, and then I'll bring this up. I know when I voted, there were, it was about forty sixty. Um, it's fifty fifty right now. Oh shit! Fifty fifty, just under twenty eight and a half thousand votes. So, I, I was good with it because I felt like. I will say at times it did feel like it was, you know, drawn out a little bit. It's like, you know, what I felt like they were just riding around, but for the majority of the race, I felt like there was, they did a good job building the storylines. They could Chastain yep. leading Byron coming up there. Um, Ty Gibbs working through the field, the Brad differing Nick. strategies like bell staying out or coming later and stuff like that too. Yeah. And so, given the hand that they were dealt, I felt like it was a, it was a good race. Different again, differing strategies, and you know, again, at the end of the race, you can't ask for much more when you're watching Christopher Bell just literally run, a, you know, a second faster lap than William Byron, and you know, there's 11 laps to go, and he's 12 seconds back, and he's running a second to a second and a half faster laps, you know. Given the hand they were dealt, now I can see the flip side of it from a non, you know, obviously us wearing NASCAR above our heads. Um, I can see where a casual would say, yeah, this was pretty damn boring. Yeah. But for for a road race, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty damn good. Um, Just differing strategies. You had the guys that were lights out quick coming through, you know, whatever at a fair amount of spins. Um, I, yeah, personally, I thought it was a damn good race. Somebody had mentioned on Twitter about, cause they have an optional course that the supercars ran however many years ago. So after the S's, it actually cuts and onto the long straightaway. And it catches it from there. So it probably cuts, I don't know if I'm guessing on here, probably a mile from the track running that one. Somebody had mentioned maybe it's just too long of a track. And if they run that optional one, maybe it would help a little bit. I don't know. Just throwing that out there as well. Um, yeah. So I, I was smiling because uh, Carson Holsevar has become a regular commentator on uh, Jeff Gluck's poll. <laughs> And he says he clicked yes this week because he enjoyed the challenge. Never got caught up for quarter cutting, so that was a plus. Rewatching the race, I could catch myself doing this. GIF attached, which is SpongeBob pointing himself out in the commercial. 
and saying that he just only critique is that he needed more 77 TV time. So from the driver's perspective, he enjoyed the challenge, which also brings up one of the points that we had, Alex, I put on there was you saw a lot of exhausted drivers after that race. Yeah, you had to the be, guys worked for that race. Had to had to honestly be physically fit. Yep. So I mean it's I I enjoyed it. You had the strategy of it. I could sit there and kind of break the race down and kind of see what guys were doing. But as from a striver standpoint, you also had the, the the physicality of that race as well and the mechanical failures that went with it. Yeah, for sure. So I enjoyed it. I voted yeah. yes. Yeah, I did too. Tough weekend for Stuart Haas. Yeah, they're not. Well, really, they're not thirteenth really cool. for for Briscoe, but that's. If there's a track that you don't mind, or I should say a type of track that you don't mind falling off a little bit on, this is probably going to be one of those. Given you have a couple of them in the playoffs, but. Yeah, they're, let's be honest, they're not built to road course race. Yeah. Unfortunately. Brad K. He found himself looking in the wrong direction a couple times throughout the day. Yeah, talk about uh, – I was listening on the radio. They said there's two guys that probably could not get out of there faster, uh, Brad Keselowski and Michael McDowell. Yep. Yep. That's unfortunate for McDowell too because that's obviously – he's a road racer through and through. Yep. So um, yep. anytime you show up to a road race, people he's like me be throw him in your, in your fantasy lineup. Yep. And on the final lap of the stage when he's got no power steering, it's like cold red on the fantasy lineup. Get him out. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. Any other final thoughts on, on Coda? No, I thought it was a good race. Wouldn't, don't mind having it on the schedule. I think it's a good spot. Yeah. But I'd agree. So yeah, that wraps up uh, the first road race of the year for the NASCAR cup series. Uh, first First race that we're going left and right. Obviously, William Byron gets the win. Um, Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs, Alex Bowman, Tyler Reddick, AJ Allmendinger, Ross Chastain, Chris Busher, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex were your top 10. Um, felt like a, a this is the future of the sport kind of finish there with William Byron, Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs. Um, really, Bowman and Reddick. Yeah, that is, you know, the future of the sport there. Um, yeah. The young guys that run up front. So, um good race um fun to watch uh, all the different strategy all the different strategies play out and uh i'm yeah. just seeing this byron almost led half of the race he led 42 of the 68 laps or no sorry he led more than half of the race yeah. okay can't do math today but yikes yeah. anyways math laughing. yeah anyways if there's no final thoughts um we'll get into um the quick hitters um and some race re some race re race previews um sorry and then um a little fantasy recap and um get into our richmond race picks so uh kel uh we'll kick it off to you yeah so we have kind of what you would cons consider a special um, in the late model stock world, you get the Orange Crush 200 um, at Orange County Speedway down in North Carolina um, for that one. And honestly, the big the big storyline with that one is Ward Burton uh, getting back behind the wheel for the first time in a long time. So um, if you followed Jeb at all, um, he, they've kind of posted a little bit of Ward doing some testing with that late model stock car. So uh, pretty cool deal there. They're racing for 15 grand to win. Uh, one note on the schedule is they announced today that that race was supposed to be Thursday night, moved to Friday night due to inclement weather. So um, Friday, March 29th, that bad boy will run for 15 grand for some late mile stock kind of track specials or features, if you want to call it that. So, yeah. Good to, cool. good to have a legend like Ward Burton hopping behind the wheel. Yeah, so that race, honestly, uh, I think he's getting back behind the wheel because that race is benefiting his uh, wildlife foundation. So, And anybody that follows Ward on Twitter as well, he's a very big uh, wildlife conservative 
uh, individual does a lot of great stuff for a lot of great uh, charities and wildlife organizations. So, yeah. So that, uh, that, that race and what they're doing there is uh, a benefit of his foundation. So only seems fitting and he gets back in the car for that uh, cause. So Cam, what do you got? Um, we're going back on the dirt. We're throwing some wings up top. Um, the world outlaw sprint cars. Um, uh, this weekend back in action. Uh, Friday, uh, the 29th, they're at Thunderbird Speedway uh, for the Thunderbird Showdown. And then Saturday, the 30th, they are at 81 Speed, uh, 81 Speedway in or for the Wichita Sprint Car Showdown. Wichita. Um, Wichita. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody else can't spell in this group. <laughs> no, no. I know it's Wichita. Wichita. Um, Wichita. <laughs> that was a. Um, that was a Mac McAfee reference one time. So Barry Sanders was from Wichita, and when he retired, um, he let one of his best friends who worked for the Wichita newspaper announce his retirement. Sure. And one of McAfee's guys on his show, dead ass, didn't know that, went to Barry Sanders and said, What went into you letting your best friend from Wichita break the news? <laughs> <laughs> they had to stop the show and go, we're sorry about the disrespect. Um, Jesus. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, World Outlaws back in action. Um, Thunderbird Showdown at Thunderbird Speedway. And then uh, Saturday, they're at 81 Speedway for the Wichita Sprint Car Showdown. Um, obviously, stay tuned for the preview. Um, we'll get into some of the details on, on the point standings and um is this the DG two year, uh, David Gravel, Sheldon Hahn, Shielder shots time. So um, stay tuned for that. And then um, Cam, I know you're on the list, but I think we had a, I think you bowed out before the, the episode due to travel. Yeah. That damned old work of mine is going to prevent me from uh, doing some race work this weekend, but uh, just real quick touch on obviously NASCAR is at Richmond this weekend. Uh, you have the Xfinity racing let me just double check here you have them racing on saturday you also have the wheel and modifieds racing on friday so you got a three-day show over there then of course uh the nascar cup series racing on sunday uh if i have to put a quick race preview together that would normally go on youtube or other socials uh it's kind of a looking at last year's races it's kind of a crapshoot as far as who who you're going to go for uh kyle larson is the defending winner of this race chris busher won it in the late summertime uh, Toyota is typically very good at this track as well. So just some key factors there. Uh, Austin Beers is your defending winner of the wheel and modified race and Chandler Smith is your defending winner of the Xfinity race. So again, kind of a, you know, who's all kind of just depends on who shows up good for this one, as far as, uh, who can win this one. I know we were kind of looking at our, who our race picks were going to be and maybe doing a little bit of research and it got a little difficult looking at last year's race, but I've got a couple in mind here and uh, ready to take the lead from you guys. So, but no, recent NASCAR at Richmond this weekend, three day show. Uh, be sure to tune in for that. Sweet. Well, without further ado, we'll get into um, some race picks and fantasy. Obviously, uh, we can skip over fantasy this week. Um, don't <laughs> well, let's let's no. do the top three then here real quick. Kellen has taken the lead back uh, from Dietzo. He's up by three points, and then I am behind by 11 points uh, in third. Um, I'm not okay. sure Not sure where I stand. I think I'm uh, fourth. You're fourth, correct. You are – oh, God, math. I think I'm, I'm like 140 points back. Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah, but Gas Man's girl, uh, is running in fifth. Sophie's pit picks is six, and Kurt Busch stand is seventh. Yeah, kind of. Well, I'm, I'm feeling all right. Um, you said you were holding your hammers off to later in the year, anyways. So I, I was, and uh, me and Carolyn were having the conversation. No more of this saving shit. <laughs> um, it's time to start starting people who show up to the track fast no more saving people um i held my cards as close as i could to my chest and uh for as long as you could and for as long as i could and i don't i don't want to bury myself too much so um 
look for look for look for some good performances here coming the next all right week. um all right honestly dude the killer is if you don't get the pickums that is such oh, a dang. absolutely the 10 bonus points and of course kellen goes four for four he's got three four five six seven in his lineup and he goes four for four it's like jesus talk about just a, a solid solid weekend yeah um, but you just got to stay within striking distance. If you guys remember last year, the regular season finale, you just got to stay within striking distance. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll get into uh, some race picks. So obviously, Kellen. Um, Kellen went with Martin Truex, and I'm sure he was thrilled that he was on pit road on lap one. So um, you can go first. You know, he does like Richmond. He does. Are you gonna go? Are you gonna go three weeks in a row? No, I'm gonna take Kyle Larson. <laughs> All right, I got Larson. Well, so you took my. Actually, I had crossed him off of my list as far as drivers I was gonna take. I had mentioned before that the Gibbs camp is really good. Well, really, Toyota as a whole is really good at this place. I'm gonna stick with that though. <sighs> Give me the grandkid. Give me Ty Gibbs to win this weekend. Oh. Give me. We referenced him this past week, and Kyle Busch has got one coming for him, but he ain't going to be able to give him one this weekend because he won't be able to catch him. I'm going with Chris for Bell. All right. So we all got some pretty good hammers here. That's where I think the fantasy hammers come out to play. So these these picks do lock in from here on out. Our fantasy picks may vary based on qualifying practice, which is why we don't really give any of them out. Plus, it's you know Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, but the definitely way too early race picks. But we're we're sticking to our guns on this. So it's really good yeah. picks. Going to be interesting to see what we how we do this weekend. Yeah. Uh, if we're curious as well, I mentioned this earlier, Cam, I think before you hopped in, uh, I, as far as our race picks go, Cam is currently up in the lead of this. Uh, he is up by eight points over me, and you are up by 38 over Kellen. So you're in the lead as far as race picks go. Yeah, we'll get that back this week. <laughs> we're going to start chipping away here. Yeah, you just gotta find gotta minimize the bad weeks. You gotta minimize yep. the damage. You can't afford to have a flopping week. Um yep. so yeah. Any other final thoughts on today's episode in general? No, nope. not just, just good week of some weekend of some solid racing. Yep. Yeah. Quiet weekend. Yeah, pretty good how you look at it. Um yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah obviously uh another fun episode here uh got to cover all gamuts of racing from the indy car to lucas oil um to asa um and then to our bread and butter nascar and going left and right so um be on the lookout uh for race previews coming later in the week um as always Drop your comments in the comment section below. Uh, give us a race pick, your race pick. Um, tell us we're dumb. Give us some ideas. Whatever you want to throw in the comments, um, we're here for it. As always, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah.